Whoa. What is up, No Win Mafia, FT Nation, FTPL family? Welcome. Yes, no sir. Win. No Win DC's podcast with your host, Coach Todd, co-host, Coach Eric Jones, a.k.a. Motherfucker Jones. Oh, he said Here. it. Sorry, Linda. He's got an alter ego. He's got two sides to him that you have to earn to see the second side. That's why yes. I love him. That's why I say I like my ride I like or die, him. baby. He – I hop on me, mean, Rick, we go back, we go way back now at this point. We've been through some shit. We've been through a lot of stuff together, made us stronger. But I've got the opportunity to see on both sides, see you be super professional, lead a group of 70 Division One football players, seeing you take down 40 beers in a night, right? So we've seen it all, right? Balance. That's what it's all about, balance and happiness. But happy to get on here and talk about some good shit tonight, man. Yeah. Yeah. This would be fun. You know, I think um, we always have had engaging conversations, at least in our opinion, you know, with each other, just shooting the shit on the couch. Um, It'd be cool to kind of put it out there. And, you know, we say this all the time, but just, you know, we're not experts in anything. We don't have anything figured out, but just being able to put yourself out there and trying to reach out to people and hopefully somebody can take something away from this, learn from, learn from it. And uh, you know, just grow as a person. So. Hell yeah, man. I think, I think we, again, we don't have it figured out. We don't have the most money in the bank. We don't have everything you know, planned out for life, but I think the, some of the journeys that we've been through to get us to where we are and the mindset we have will add value to someone. And yeah, I always say shit, we'll get five downloads on these at first, but we affect one person. That's a positive. That's a win. And we just want to be able to help out anyone in any way we can. So, you know, today we're really focusing on, you know, more chasing happiness rather than chasing a paycheck, I think, is the biggest thing. For me, that was taught to me and instilled in my head from a young, young age. You know, shit, my dad did it. I think that's why they supported me to do what I did to get here. And he still tells me that to this day. He's like, I may bitch sometimes about going to work, but I didn't work today in my life. And he was broke. He was working at a farm. He was pumping gas, trying to save up to go to flight school, you know. Helicopter pilots in 1980s didn't pay shit at first. Now they're everywhere, but he had to grind through it. And he always equated it to what we're doing, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, and I'm in a similar situation. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was brought up in a, you know, above average, I guess, family. You know, I never really had to worry about finances. Um, We never, you know, were struggling in terms of that. Early on as a young kid, when my my parents owned a small business, um, so like early on, it was cool to see as I got older, the progression of that business and see it really grow, you know, them opening another business uh, to supplement the one that they had, you know, with the laws changing there in the, the, the beer business. So, um, you know, in Pennsylvania, the laws are constantly changing. So to combat that and then, you know, being able to consolidate it back into one store, expand the store um, really, you know, allowed me to chase a dream. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, I, I have to give credit to them. They, they, you know, really backed me in everything I, I did. They never told me, no, you know, that's a bad idea. If I really wanted to do it, I was able to do it. Um, so having that backing, but at the same time, it always ate at me that I had to rely on them. You know what I mean? I would always say, you know, Hey, do you need any money? No, I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I had a hard time in my brain like accepting things from them because I knew where they came from and what they created. So I wanted to be able to do that. You know what I mean? And they were the same way. My dad worked at a, a, a beef jerky plant, you know, analysis beef. And he, you know, he did that for a few years. He worked at a tile and he just, you know, he's like, I can't be this person. I can't, I'm not going to be this person that just goes to work, clocks in, clocks out every day. Um, so seeing that really, I think was a big, uh, I think them going through it together probably, you know, I mean, that obviously, A, you seeing them do it, but B, them, they want wanted to provide for you. You know, as bad as you felt, they probably liked nothing more because they chased their dream than giving you whatever they gave you to help you out to be able to follow yours. So being like, oh, you're 18 or A, you, gra- you know, you graduated college, you're done, cut off, go figure it out. Yeah, and I think that comes from their background too. Like, you know, they didn't have anything growing up. You know, like they, th- their parents made ends meet and did the best they could for them. Um, so I think that helped push them to the point where like, no, I don't want my kid to grow up like that. You know what I mean? And, and I, we've had these conversations before. They tell me that all the time. You know, we, we didn't want you, we wanted you guys to have options growing up, 
you know, and that's going to be something I take for the rest of my life is, you know, making sure whenever I have an offspring is to, uh, you know, provide the same thing for them. So that, you know, obviously pushes me every day, but, uh, you know, that it just, the, the way you're brought up and the, the values that you have, I think take you a long way. Yeah. I, I think, I think in a way when you finally become for some people for our, our, our upbringing, yes. A lot of people know, I think in a way when you become officially like fully cut off, you know, living on your own, I think in a, in a way it kind of makes them sad. It's like, you finally, Oh my God. Yeah. Like, baby, every, you know, they like nothing more than being like, Hey Eric, go check your account. There's $200 in it. Every time I, I, my mom's always calling me, Hey, when are you coming home next? You know, when the quarantine hit, like you're always welcome here. You can stay here. We got plenty of space. And at the time I had my little brother, my sister and her boyfriend were both living at the house waiting to move into their apartment. And then she wanted me to come back. I'm like, are you sure? Like, that's a lot of, you know, things to take care of. And she's like, of course. Yeah. You know, so, oh, yeah, man. and that's something to be able to, to, to notice and having the, the awareness to be able to notice that and be like, wow, like they're really, you know, giving up a lot to be able to provide for you. Oh yeah. But we keep, we're, we're, we keep mentioning it and what we've done, you know, for a lot of people, they see us, they'll see us on Instagram or whatever. They, they, they're on ESPN. They see big time strength coaches or people in our field. And there's a lot of different fields like this. This is just the one, but a lot of people have the same journey and something else. Like I said, my father, but what we do, you know, let's kind of dive into it. You know, we're, we're strength coaches, right? Different sectors, but strength coaches. We both came up through the same pipeline, essentially. We're a different breed because until you make it to Alabama, big schools, I mean, it's – you're not driving around and, and freaking, you know, bending. No, you ain't making shit. You ain't yeah. making shit. You ain't making shit. Um, you know, so for me, like, I started right out of college. I intern, volunteer intern at the school I graduated from, Bloomsburg. And then I volunteered again at Villanova University for a summer. Thankfully enough, I was able to earn a paid position, a part-time paid position. It was a thousand bucks a month. And, you know, that's where I first met you. And you, you know, did the same exact thing, did a volunteer intern, earned a, a paid position as well, which then we kind of ran with it. And we're able to, you know, be at the right place, right time, got to run the whole, you know, department for – however long that was, you know, which was a, a hell of an experience to do at 22, 23 years old, you know, running a division one football program was something looking back is like, I can't believe I did that thinking, but at the time I didn't know any different. I was like, this is a position I'm in. I got to kill it. Like I have to do it. You know what I mean? You just got to roll with it, you know? And then even after that, so I, you know, you become in your brain, you become like, okay, I just ran this. I got big things coming. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm getting the next step. And then, you know, I hard for you to, to step back from that. Yeah, it was like, I moved on to ULM university of Louisiana Monroe as a GA. And, uh, you know, you're in grad school, you got a monthly stipend. Um, and you know, I had way less responsibility. So at first it was tough. Like I was used to having to do everything there. I had, you know, I had responsibility, but you know, I had a couple teams that I ran I did minimal stuff with football, um, just kind of was on the floor coaching. But, uh, you know, after that, you know, I did a year there and then was had the opportunity to kind of be the head at Millersville, but that was only $9,000 job. It was considered quarter time, quarter time job wow. where you are the head strength conditioning coach for a football team and you get $9,000 a year. Which is like 90 hours a week. Yeah. Um, what would you say like, for, the, for the average of your job if you broke it down hourly? I, I mean, it's, I don't even know what it would be, but it's something, if you were to tell, if you were to say, like, I say this to people all the time, if I were, it's people ask me, like, so like, what do you do? Strength conditioning. And somebody who doesn't know athletics or anything, but what is that? You know what I mean? If I were to tell them exactly what I do for the amount of money that I did, like, okay, I work like, you know, like six to six um, on average, you know, sometimes later, seven days a week during football season. Um, and I make $1,500 uh, a month they'd be like what why would you do that that doesn't Dude, even make any sense why would you do that? I mean, remember we're at nova yeah. and we're waking up at 3 30 to get there at 4 30 when we were in charge of everything so we have everything with football you're also doing equipment you're putting the gps in there you're running the smoothie the snacks you're you're making the weight room you're in charge of the interns you're running your teams then you have your other teams baseball track whatever then you have to sit back and program then you have your night people come in and you got to train you have to prepare for the next day and I'm like, how, how much were we making doing that? No, and th for me, again, I say that 
this, that's what we want to talk about. It's not about the money for me. It's just in your genes. If you want to be a coach, it's, it's in your genetic makeup. It is same thing when I was a GA at Misericordia prepared me for everything. Cause like fuck, an eight hour work day for probably three times what we were making doing all that shit is like, how is that? How can you even just justify that? You know, I'm like, yeah. I'm stealing money from people. Yeah. But it's- I was just coming up. I, I didn't have a, a path that I wanted to go coming out of high school. I barely even went to college. I was like, you know, I got injured. Uh, I had a in- neck injury coming out of, you know, my junior year. So I wasn't playing college sports, just wasn't in the hand. You know, I would have loved to, I wasn't any that good either. I would have played division three division. You know what I mean? If I wanted to, but like, I wasn't able to, it wasn't in the cards with, you know, the injury that I had. So I kind of went off the rails a little bit was like, you know what, screw it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, and, uh, I applied to college super late was like, took the last SAT possible, went through college, didn't really have a plan. And I just love training. That's what got me to the point, you know, where in sports that I could compete, you know, I wasn't super athletic, so I had to train to be able to be good. That was always an interest of mine. Sports was always an interest of mine. So it was never about finding a job. It was about like, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? It wasn't about like, you know, I want to do this to make X out of X amount of money. It was, what can I see myself doing? Because the, the saying of like, if you work a day in your life, if you never work a day in your life, then you found the right job. I think it's so true because I never pictured work as work. It was just something that I did because that's what I, I do. Like that's, when the long hours come, you're just tired. You're not sick of work. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you know, and I don't think I've ever heard you say in all our time together, I mean, we always kept in touch. I mean, we were always FaceTime when you were in Louisiana, you know, everywhere. I've never heard you say, fuck, dude, I got to go to work tomorrow. And dude, I, I have friends that make probably, you know, well over six figures to say that every goddamn Sunday. I, when right. people, I had a friend, a family friend of mine over on a, on uh, a Sunday one time and I'll, I'll never forget it. We're sitting there and he's like, damn, I got work tomorrow. And I'm like, it, it like clicked for me. I'm like, I never say that. I'm like, not- yeah, like, you're like, oh, I got to wake up a guy, you know, I got to get up before, but I'm like, I'm thinking about like what I have to do rather than dreading the fact that I have to go do it. You know what well, I mean? The way I, I equate it and what I, so I always do, I'm a big, like, like math equation type guy, like everything's simple, right? Are your, and for most people they don't work just nine to five like with the travel and everything you're doing from home seven, but say five o'clock, right? Is your 5 PM to five to 10 PM or whatever. And your weekends worth all the time that you're miserable the other 40 hours of the week is what you're doing and what you can buy during those times worth. Cause if you're working and you hate your fucking job and you were going by the time you wake up, shower travels, probably seven 30 to realistically 6 PM. If you hate your shit so bad during those times is the weekend worth it? What you yeah. can buy, where you can, is it? Fuck no. And I say, Help. and it, I'll tell you what too, kind of going along with that is like, I always, and we were spoiled at Villanova. Like we had a great crew of people where we were like best friends. We got along with each other. Every day at work was a blast. You know, like we, we got along so well, clicked, everybody was clicking on all cylinders. Um, and you go other places and it's not like that. You know, like I've been other places where the staff dynamic was not like that. And that can go to any job where you're like, when you're not working with people that you enjoy or you don't enjoy being in the environment that you're in it, it's so taxing. Like it's can be so exhausting on you and you can, ch- it can change as a person where like your whole mindset changes just because of the environment you're in yeah. at your workplace. So, so, so true. I think, you know, even if you're unhappy in the job you're in, regardless of what it is, even if it's not coaching, like you got to find a way to get out of it and find a different environment. Cause it's going to be, it, you're going to, in the long run, it's going to pay off because you're, you're, you're going to find yourself becoming, you know, so negative and looking at everything in a bad perspective, just because of the environment that you're constantly placed in and the people that you're around. And, and I think, I think so much of that becomes the unfulfillment, right? You're not fulfilling your, your emotional needs, right? So Michael Chernikaus, he always says, you know, live with a purpose to serve a purpose, whatever your purpose is, right? If you are punching, this is my opinion, you know, again, would I like to make half a million dollars a year working nine to five? But one hundred percent, it would be phenomenal. But I've had a job like I left doing what we're doing to go take a normal job, and 
it's just, it's no matter how much shit, in my opinion, that you can buy, no matter how much many trips you can go on, if you're not feeling fulfilled at the end of every day, like you're not working towards something, it's just clock in, clock out, there's no enjoyment, there's no satisfaction or fulfillment out of it, then you're always going to be chasing something else and you're never really going to enjoy the moment you're in. You're not even going to be enjoying the moments with your family if you're not fulfilled with something. You know, yeah. for some people doing that and being able to spend time with their kids and eat dinner with them every night at five and having the weekends and that's it. It's a, it's a sacrifice I want to make. I just, my brain is not wired like that. And I need constantly to be trying to grow or move forward to something else. I don't know how to do the downtime well. And it is actually a downfall, but being a coach in, in the collegiate realm made me that way from the jump. Yeah. Like, I don't find shit to do. Like, yeah. And I, um, you know, I think like going along with that and getting involved with this, with the whole no Winnie sleeves thing, you know, like it was something for me to do in my free time because that's what I enjoy doing. And it was a productive thing to do. You know, like you always have, to, you can find time to do the other things that you enjoy, go golf and go fish and whatever it is. Like that doesn't have to be your escape all the time, you know, drinking beers, whatever it might be. You know, if you can find something else outside of work, even if it's, you know, a, a separate company or whatever it is, you know, you, you know, multiple streams of revenue is huge, especially when you're not making a ton of money. Oh, that yeah. can go a long way. So, and this goes hand in hand with my job. So like, but or my day job. Doing it, right? And that goes back to it. This, people get paid to do what we're doing right now. A lot of money in, in some cases, right? We, we sit here on Zooms and almost nightly to 10, 11 o'clock, Right doesn't feel like work i don't dread it. i look forward to getting home and sitting at my desk and getting on the zoom with you guys and figuring out how to a grow this company but b make a difference right it's because we like it it's not work and it, that goes the same thing that we do when we wake up every morning you yeah. know and i'll like, tell you when you when you told me that because that was early on in my career you know you you had been in coaching longer than i had when i first met you you know you had been through uh the, the whole thing at misericordia and went to Comcast and did your thing and then left. And when you told me that, how much, you know, you were making and how miserable you were doing it, I was like, okay, well, that was kind of reassuring for me. Like, you know, cause I, at the time I was like, I don't know if this is what I want to do. I'm just kind of rolling with the punches here. You know, I, I'm just seizing the opportunities that I was given. And, you know, that was pretty reassuring when you hear that stuff. It's like, you know, all right, well, yeah, this is kind of, I, I feel the same way. You know, I don't want to be in that situation. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I think my parents like were so like, they just let me go do the Comcast thing. Cause they knew they're like, this is going to help him in the alarm. It's going to make him learn and realize what we always told him about, you know, chasing your dream and not a paycheck because they they always said that to me. And when they, when I was like, I'm quitting coaching, I'm going to take a job just to make money. I want to buy a house with that stage, blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, go ahead. They were like, maybe he needs that to learn on his own instead of from us, but he will. And he'll be back. I was, I went to college. I graduated with a criminal justice degree and I wanted to go down and do customs and border protection. The whole thing. I started the application junior year, went through all the way, got my polygraph, my physical fitness, got accepted, was waiting essentially for a placement of where to go. So while I was waiting, I was working landscape. So I took a couple of weeks off, went down to Misericordia, helped out in fall ball. My coach was like, you belong in coaching. You, your hair is mad, whatever. It's like, you belong in coaching. Would you be open to doing a volunteer year? And then be my grad assistant for two years, go back to school for free, get a master's. You told me I was getting a master's when I was in high school. I would have told you you were high, I'm not a school guy. I went and did that. And my plan was always get my master's, go back and do customs and border protection. I fell in love with coaching, fell in love with, I was coaching baseball. And being a grad assistant, you know, is you're the, you're the bitch. You know, you do everything, anything and everything, 90, 100 hours a week for a stipend and a, and a degree. That like embeds in your body that now anywhere I go, that's the only thing I know. You just, there's always something that can be done to improve. And I got burnt out hard at the end of it. And I was like seeing my friends it was at the time everyone was graduated and making money, buying cars, getting houses with their girls, vacations. I couldn't do it. I was just like, fuck it. Believe it. I went and I sold cable door to door with my brother for like seven, six or seven months. Make great money living in a place, my rent was $230 a month, right? I'm buying dogs, Harleys, tattoos, like a bunch of shit. And like six months in, I was just like, I would come home every, no matter how much shit I bought, I was 
I was fucking miserable. I was a really big breaking point in my life. Big. And um, my mom drove down. She was just like in New Hampshire because I was so messed up. She was like, just fucking quit. Go do what you love. They helped me. They supported me. And I got back into coaching. And I realized when I was coaching baseball that I just loved training kids. You know, I like training kids more than I like coaching baseball. And then when I, you know, I went, I was 26 years old. I took a volunteer internship at Cincinnati with no strength conditioning. It was embarrassing, kind of. You know, all my friends are get, just got their masters and buying a bunch of shit. And I'm making zero dollars, literally mopping floors at University of Cincinnati. Best decision, best opportunity I ever had in my entire life to do that. Changed everything. Let me just went back. Yeah, to and Kat, thinking about that, you know, some people thrive off that Comcast type gig. You know, some people love that, where it's like, that's the reward for them. Like, I'm making, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they're about. And power to it. You know, if that's, if that's what makes you happy and that's what you're about, all the power, all power to you. Go do it. Go kill it. You know what I mean? The the That can be a thrill, like, you know, chasing the, the next sign. Like, oh, I made this many signs today. I made this many signups, you know, this week. Like, that that can be a, a, a thrill for anybody if that's what you're into and that's what you're about. You know, this is going to set me up to be able to get this in life. This is going to be set, set me up to do this in life. Like, and as long as it has a, a plan to it and you have, like, aspirations to do bigger things, what you're doing, I think the biggest mistake you can make is, you know, doing something where you don't have that, where you're like, you feel that you're stuck and you're just, you know, like you said, clocking in, clocking out. You have no way to move up or you have no way to, to gain any more than what you're doing. So I think no matter what you're doing, if there's ways to grow or ways to, to uh, advance yourself within whatever workplace you're in or whatever uh, field that you're in, that's what's going to cause that happiness or that drive or that motivation to do what you, you do every day. Hell yeah. It's never too late to change your life. That's a big thing. It takes a leap of faith though. Cause I've seen other people go through it now and, and make the leap of faith and are so much happier. There's people, you know, they go back, decide to go back to school when they're 45. Fuck. Yeah. That gives me juice. It's never too late. And I made that decision. People were like, you're moving 10 hours away from your girlfriend that you want to propose to. Yeah, it was right. And then it led me to Nova which went and did a volunteer internship with you, like you said, and then we worked up to a paid spot, which was shit, working 90, 100 hours a week still. Let me do the opportunity here at Fast Switch, which I don't think people realize what starting a gym with zero people and trying to build it out would take. That was the same thing. And when I first got here, we had no clients, and I thought I left it. I'm taking a cushiony private job. I fucking proposed to my girlfriend. I'd start saving for a wedding. I wasn't making money. There was no one in the gym. I delivered pizza for Domino's. For like two months until doc found out and he was like don't don't do that we'll do this together and i started working upstairs for him but that's what it took but i was so happy with what i was doing there during the day for me and my brand i was just like that's what you had to do as a man right i'm not gonna ask people for shit but as a man i went home every night at 7 30 p.m put my fucking domino's visor on my polo in front of ashley Gave her a kiss and went and did that. Came back at two o'clock, woke up at six the next morning. But I was so happy with the gym shit that I didn't care. You know? Yeah. I was led to everything else, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, for me personally, like in five years, am I going to love what I'm doing still? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I want to go do something completely different, get out of the, the college coaching field. I think it will always be in something along these lines, you know what I mean? But is it going to be in, you know, college strength conditioning? I don't know. I think it just always dictate has to, has to depend on what your life currently is like and what you're about, what your family's doing. You know, you have to always make those decisions depending upon where you're at currently and where you see yourself in the next five, 10 years. So for me right now, you know, I love what I do and I want to keep doing it, you know, but to say that's not going to end and my mindset's not going to change to try to chase something else. You know, very well could be, and I'll, and I'll make that decision when that, you know, uh, has to come. But everyone's situation and position in life is different. So your path to it's going to be different. If you were to honk on wood, pop out a kid next month, you might not be able to do what you're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. there's people in different situations that have to take different paths. We were fortunate that we had parents that supported us to do it. It's led us here and said, we're not where we want to be, but I'll tell you what I've turned down since I've gotten here multiple other jobs making quite a bit more than I make here. I'll do it every freaking day because I am so happy 
with what I do. It's just, it's just, it's a, one of the things I'm willing to give up because I'd rather, Ashley says it every day. She's like, you love what you do so much that working 12, 14 hours a day is nothing. I can't picture you being happy going and doing that. And that would affect us, you know? Yeah. Like and, you know, kind of reflecting on the last four years being at, you know, blue note, you know, probably five different schools, you know, bouncing around the country a little bit. I made a big decision early on, like, you know, do I want to, when I was in college still, like, do I want to, you know, chase that? Cause I knew you're going to have to move around. And I was like, I'm 24. I don't have any kids, you know, why not? Why not go try it? Right. And that led me to so many, like thinking back on all the cool things that I was able to do by making that decision was huge. Cause like the amount of stories that I have, the amount of experiences that I've had in just four years of doing it, like, I can't believe it's only been four years. Like it feels like a decade. Like it literally feels like a decade. I've been doing this for a decade and I haven't, like I'm just so young in it. Remember what you used to give me? I know. <laughs> and now I think you're my age when I was a Nova. How old are you? Yeah, I'll be 27 in a couple months. You're getting old, little Ricky. I remember you just a young pup. But I every day I'd come in and Rick be like, ooh, have some beers tonight, you know? Whatever. I'm like, dude, I'm 27 years old. I can't be shotgunning beers with you at Georgie's Lane. You're like, dude, we're in the same spot here. And, I, and in my head, this was a terrible mindset on my end. You know what I'm saying? Like, who gives a shit if I'm 27, you're 23. I'm happy as shit doing what we're doing. It's like the societal pressure. Get rid. When I stopped with that shit, which is when I became the happiest I've ever been. And I wish I had that when I was living with you. Well, I kind of don't because I feel like we would have gotten into some probably big trouble or some <laughs> deep shit. But I, I wish I had that mindset because I think I would have been – I enjoyed my time there more than anything. But I think I would have had a different perspective on it at that time. They always say you don't know the good old days so they're until they're the good old days. But yeah. Yeah. I would do anything. I wouldn't change my life right now. But to be living in Georgie's Lane with you, with no responsibilities, coaching, having some drinks, you know, like – it's a perspective and that pressure that you get. I wish I didn't have it, but that's the shit that yeah. people put on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a I fun think life checklist. I, I said this the other day on one of the, one of the calls and um, was like me, my personality, like you said, I'm always like kind of happy and just, you know, bouncing around doing my thing. Like I got a lot of fuck it, you know, to a point where it almost too much where like, it gets me into trouble sometimes. Like situation pops out. I'm, I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, that has its, uh, you know, downfalls at times, but it's led me to so many great things and, you know, put me in a lot of situations that, you know, went for the better. And you taking also that can say fuck it. Cause you know, the type of person you are, you're going to, whatever consequences you're going to fix and you're going to live with, but you're going to fix them after. I think that's a big thing that dude, that's what the Corona and all this shit going on has taught me. I actually had a conversation about it last week, you know, nothing's promised tomorrow. I need to say fuck it more because I know the type of person I am. I need to enjoy it because I know I'll be able to to fix whatever the fuck is going on, whatever I messed up. But enjoy the moment more and stop always waiting for the perfect opportunity to do something. Right? Ashley and I, we were like, oh, we'll have kids in a couple of years. And because we're not we're not 100% where we want to be or ready yet. A couple of years from now, we would say the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Just started looking at houses because I'm like – Nothing is guaranteed. Let's start living our life and creating the life we want right now. And if something happens in a year that we shouldn't have bought the house, we will deal with it then. But we'll get through it like we're getting through the virus, like we're getting through all this other shit. We're going to have the baby. It's like, I think, fuck it. If you can back it up is a really good thing to have. And I've this whole virus has taught me, probably spending more time with you, shit. <laughs> it's taught me to have a little bit more of that to enjoy the now a little bit more and create those opportunities yeah because my outlook on it is like what what really do you have to lose you know like obviously you have to make calculated decisions like you can't just go all willy-nilly but like you know like you have to make calculated decisions at some point but if you have an end goal in mind and the pros outweigh the cons why not what do you got to lose you know i like 100 percent and that goes that that ste- I think that stems from the path that you've taken and that I've taken and people and entrepreneurs especially like shit like that have taken because smaller the risk usually the smaller the reward 
you know, so the big risk of having a fight through for maybe another four years of bouncing around sweet. That fifth year, when you get that awesome job that you're going to be at forever and it's all this, like that's a big reward for the big risk that oh, yeah. you're doing it. And I think yeah. that's what people miss. Yeah. And I think like, I've always said, like, I'm not going to change the kind of person I am for the setting I'm in. Like, yeah, you have to be professional when you have to be professional. You have to be, you know, you can loosen up when you're, you know, with your buddies or whatever, but like, just be the person you are and people will enjoy that more than anything else. Like people sniff bullshit so easily, especially in today's world. Like people are looking for bullshit more than anything else. And they might so, not tell you, but they're going to leave the room. They're going to be like this fucking dude. Yeah. And knowing that and knowing that, that like people are talking about you regardless, like, you know what I mean? Like we just live in a judgmental world. That's how humans are. You know what I mean? They, they judge you with the first time you, the way you walk in, the way you walk into the room, you're getting judged. So just knowing that, and, uh, you know, always having that in the back of your mind, be like, I'm, they're, they're talking about me. They're thinking about me. They're evaluating me every single second that they're talking to me. Everybody's making an evaluation on you, you know? So like, why try to act like something you're not, you know, just be like, I'm a goofy guy. I'll, I'll admit it. I'm a quirky dude. I got weird. I do weird things, but that's who I am. I own it. You know what I mean? Like, sure. and in the way room, your circle, how small is your circle of actual people that give a shit? Right. So if you're happy, it, it, like it's so cliche to say but like who gives a shit because those people you really don't have an effect or an impact on your life so go back to like work or whatever if you're happy what you're doing and it's not what other people think is good who gives a shit because your small circle fucking respects it and loves you for it you know yeah and it only gets it only gets smaller as life goes on you know I'm people come and we kept in touch after nova yeah no, hey i'm just, I'm just kidding <laughs> People I come and go. We, I knew and, once uh, we moved in, we'd be there. What's that? I knew once we moved in together, we were fucking lifers. Yeah. Went through too much crap in that house. <laughs> you know? But, I, but uh, you know, like, it, just knowing that, you know, that you have that circle and, uh, you know, the, the people that are going to be there are always going to be there. And the people that you come in contact with throughout life that you're, you know, want to be around more often or that you want to stay in contact with you will like just out of like pure nature just out of subconscious like you'll always reach out to those people those people always reach out to you you know what i mean the people that you you know didn't really maybe connect with the best or that you you know didn't uh relate to the most they'll just eventually wash away and you'll just kind of you know maybe not forget about them yeah they were a good person whatever but they're just never going to be in your circle and that it is what it is why waste your time trying to impress them I always yeah. say people are like, what do you mean you don't? Like, you like nice things. You like, you get your haircut once a week, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I do that shit for myself. I like nice shit. I like having a haircut. I don't do it for other people. Yeah, I am a firm believer in making a good first impression on anyone because I think it's a good thing to do. I think you can only make a first impression twice. I don't buy the shit that I have. I don't get my haircuts for other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do it because I like it, but that stems from realizing how I real something came to me probably like two years ago that just made me realize how small your circle is, that how, like how influential those people are in your life. And those are the people you should put your time and energy into not fucking social media, not what people, how many likes you get from, from throwing a flex up. Right. It's about the people that are actually, you know, emotionally and, and, you know, invested in your life and you care about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I care about helping people and I want to help people. If someone doesn't like me because of my woe or, you know, I get made fun of for it or, or whatever, like, you know, I wish that you had a different mindset and you didn't judge, but at the same time, I, I'd rather put my energy and effort into, into people that believe in me and believe in what we're doing, you know? Yeah. I mean, the same thing for me, like when you reached out to me to come on board, you know, it was for me, it was more of like, I was never a big social media guy. You know what I mean? That's like kind of the way we're doing it. Um, and that's like the world we live in. Like, that's what you, that's how you have to do things. And, you know, I just never paid attention to it, but when you reached out to me and, you know, you asked me kind of, you know, put stuff out for athletes, that kind of stuff. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do that. But it was mainly because I, you had a vision to, to do something to, in the end, you know, help people make a difference in people's lives. I did it to, you know, be a part of something that you were growing, you know, it wasn't to be like, Oh, I want to go, you know, become this social media mogul and like, you know, yeah. get, you know, sponsor and all that stuff. That never crossed my mind. 
You know what I mean? It was more of like, oh, Tut's got a cool vision going on. Like, I want to be a part of that. You know, it did, wasn't really anything else outside of that. It was, he's got something cool going on. And, you know, I want to be, I want to be a part of his vision and I want to be a part of, you know, get back and in, involved in his life and, you know, be able to move on from there. Dude, the whole No Windy Sleeves thing, re, I won't say rekindle, like we're dating or something, but like, you know, you do lose touch with people we were talking probably once a month, but now I literally, days that you don't FaceTime me, I text you and ask you if everything's all right. You know, like that's how much we talk now and different things obviously build the different relationships. But I say like this, No Windy Sleeves, the movement of putting yourself out there and like the perfect example. How, at first, it's hard to put yourself out there because you're like, all these people follow me. They're going to be judging me what I'm doing now. And then like something clicks and you're like, I'll put out bloopers. I'll put out whatever. Cause the people that are actually going to, you know, care about me are going to like, enjoy it. Right. Those other 500 followers that I have that just follow me for whatever, that don't know me or believe me or like my vision. Okay. Scroll past it. Yeah. But that's a big jump too. Yeah. Making that yeah. Commitment, you know, yeah. um, I think so much of it, but, I say that relationships that we've rekindled and the people that we can, that we've affected um, and brought back together. Look, we hang out with Wit now. Again, we talked to Wit. We, we lost touch with Wit. There's so many other people that we're bringing together and affecting now through this that I think is freaking awesome. Not to get too off, off subject on it, but you know what I'm saying? I think, um, I think there's so much to learn from that. And it, we're building relationships from putting ourselves out there and not caring what people are thinking and chasing our happiness. My happiness is helping people. That has yeah. led me, brought me so many new relationships. People have reached out to me. I talk to them every day now. Cause I, you know, either I train them or they want tip, whatever, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that whole part of it is what really drives me, you know, or, or kind of why I'm on the path I'm in because like, that is what coaching really is. You know, it's you're, you're in it because you enjoy seeing people develop. I was always like that, even in like relationships. Like if like my girlfriend wanted to be like, you know, Hey, what do you want to do for dinner today? I don't care. Whatever you want to do, you know? And like, they hate that. But like, that's how I am because I like, I don't really care as long as you're happy. Like that's what, that's what I want, you know, to do. Um, well, so that's, like, I think that's what a lot of coaching is in everything, coaching, personal training, whatever. Yeah. It's not, I mean, we love, Dude, there's people that love lifting more than we do who are accountants, right? We just like helping people hands-on get to where they want to be. And I always say we just use training as a tool to develop people for life and help people in their life situations. That's why I like it. I coach baseball. I coach in the college. Now I coach one-on-one -on -one people, athletes, 80-year-olds, everyone, right? I just like helping people. And coaching is just the most accessible tool for me to do that. Yeah. And I, like at an early age, my coaches kind of, I always seemed like the coach in the field or whatever, you know, I was always like in tune with the sport and, you know, you know, being kind of a brain on the field. So like, I was always looked at as like, if you didn't know what to do, ask Eric, ask Jones, you know, he'll, he'll know what to do like that kind of thing. So I think subconsciously that kind of led me into the field that I was in and uh, you know, the, the reward that you get from like, for example, in college, like, seeing a you know female athlete who has never trained a day in her life be able to do her first chin up is like one of the coolest things ever yeah. you know like the the when they're like oh my god i finally did it i didn't think i'd ever be able to do that and like not, that's cooler not to from me numbers or a strength perspective from everything that goes into it. oh yeah that's cooler to me than like seeing somebody hit a 500 pound squat yeah. you know like oh, yeah, that's obviously still cool but seeing somebody see something do something that they never thought they'd ever be able to do is like one of the most rewarding things ever and that is can that be in any is that why you've chased this passion is that why you've sacrificed going and helping your parents open another place and work there or go do whatever is that why because you like helping people and that's a sacrifice you know yeah because at the end of the and i don't even think it goes i think it goes deeper than that like that's what makes me happy at work you know, like that's what makes my day easier. That's where I, what I enjoy. So why not keep doing that? Why I try, try to change? To, I tell people that my boys, right? Nobody sleeps. Blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, you guys are killing it. I'm just feeding your bank account. Every time I buy a shirt, I'm like, dude, we don't make a dollar. 
we take a dollar from no windy sleeves, right? We just are building it because we love to do it because we love to help people. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, yes, any business you start, you want it to, you want to make millions, right? It's called a millionaire byproduct. That's just a byproduct of us actually doing what we want to do because we enjoy doing it. If I don't make a dollar off, if I can't pull a dollar out of the no windy sleeves bank account for the rest of my life, but it keeps getting the traction and more people are getting help that we're getting the results and hearing people on the zoom calls talk about how much they benefit from it for the next 20 years. I will continue to put this much effort into making it the best and most viable platform for people to grow and improve themselves every day because I enjoy doing it. You know, sorry, I'm talking about my freaking neck veins. <laughs> you know, and, and like, I don't want to come on here and, you know, sound like we're like these righteous people that like, Oh, we're like profits that are going to change your life for the better, you know, like I've, and you know, my friends on here that are going to listen to this, they're going to be like, what the hell is Jones talking about? You know, like he's done some fucked up shit in his life. You know, like everybody does that stuff. But uh, you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, it comes down to what you enjoy doing. And if it's going door to door, selling cable and making that X amount of money each week to be able to build on that and create a life for yourself, power to you that's what that that's what makes you happy man yeah all about it you know what yeah. i mean i support it finding what makes you happy and again like you said we're not getting on here saying it's like we make zero dollars and you know we're just living freely you need to live money you need to make money it's just about trying to capitalize on in an area that makes you happy to be able to do the same thing and in our downtime doing stuff that makes us happy not for money you know yeah. i want to buy a house in, in freaking bergen county new jersey that's not, that doesn't get, the mortgage doesn't get paid off hopes and dreams. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think it goes back to the pros and cons. Like, like you said, you know, is buying a car or a house or being able to go on a vacation with your boys, whatever it is, outweigh your work day, your nine to five, you know, for some people. Yeah. A hundred percent. And there may come a time in my life where that does outweigh. And I just want to, you know, sit back, Clock in, clock out, I'm done. That's what I want to do. You know what I mean? I don't think I'll ever stop, you know, not wanting to, you know, influence other people because that's, like I said, I think it's one of the most rewarding things. It's in my DNA. Um, But at the same time, you know, it's like whatever, whatever you want to get out of your, your, your life has to be the priority or, you know, has to be what your, your motivating factor is. So if those vacations and that car and that house is what motivates you and makes you, and makes, makes you, makes you, you know, want to come home at the end of the day, then yeah. You know what I mean? That's fine. Do it. You know what I mean? It doesn't, as Gary Vee always says, your nine to fives pay the bills, man. Your five to midnight pays your dreams, you know? So if you are stuck or whatever, like it's never too late. Like there is time. You can start to do something that you want to do. That looks nice. What do you got in there? Um, I have uh, cranberry and orange juice, pure cranberry, orange juice. Um, maybe even. a little, maybe a little spike action for this, uh, for this conversation here, you know, get the juices flowing. All right. All right. But yeah, and yeah a little nightcap, you know what I'm saying? That's a bit, I need a nightcap. I had to make my beef still, but I think that's the biggest thing to get it. We wanted to really get across today and kind of just use our journeys, I guess, as a, as a, example of how two people did it and i don't want to say did it like we did it we made it how people are doing it still to this day we'll continue to do it but chasing happiness before chasing a paycheck and yes i do understand people got to pay bills but i'm a firm believer you can make it work to chase happiness before chasing a paycheck yeah like i'm i'll say now like i'm an assistant strength conditioning coach making way less you know, sub $50,000 a year, you know, at 27 years old, I have a lot of friends that are making twice as that twice as much money as me. You know what I mean? Are they happy in their lives? Maybe, but I'm happy with what I'm doing and I enjoy what I'm doing and I want to progress. So why change? Like why try to do something else? If you enjoy exactly what you're doing and you want to progress in life and you want to progress in your career, you know, that's what you want to do. Who cares? Like, who cares? Like, you know, yeah. that's what really. What you're happy. Like. That's the fucking main goal in life. Yeah, and you're not a dick. Like, you're you're just you're not like being. You know, and I was at one point in my life. You know, I you know, kind of was a selfish guy at some points. But like, 
you know, it comes to a point where you got to figure out where you want to go and what's going to get you there and double down on that stuff. You know, like I've got on yourself, bro. Yeah. I've worked, you know, multiple different jobs across the country that have paid zero to, you know, $1,000 a month. And I wouldn't change it for the world because it gave me so many different experiences and gave me so many different avenues in life to go. And I hope that it keeps going because it's fucking fun, man. It's fucking fun. That's it, baby. I love it, man. Well, Rick, thanks for popping on. As always, Coach Eric Jones, a.k.a. Motherfucker Jones. You got to earn it to look to meet Motherfucker Jones. But appreciate you guys. Coach Tut signing out. We'll talk to you guys next week. A year.